goods. So what is COD or cinema on demand? Well, one of the first examples of cinema on demand, which is the new world thinking, comes from Brazil actually. And Brazil is this huge, massive country, 180 million people, and it's very big geographically speaking, and the roads are not so good, and things do tend to get lost here and there on, on the way that's from one place to another. So a group of, um, of different, uh, a company came together, all the different, there's 98% of the dependent theater owners in Brazil built this fiber optic network so they can uh, share information to each other. And there's a company out there called Ray Networks, or Movie Mops, and some of you might have heard of it, but they're really the first to understand this, and what they do is like, if they get a digital file of the film, then they put, put it on their website. And, and that website will now go social media-wise, so people can access that. And let's say Raul in Rio wants to see the celebration by Thomas Winterberg from 96. Then he goes into this website, I would like to see the celebration. Does anybody out there want to watch it with me? And somebody else said, yes, I would like to, another person. Then slowly through social media, people start going, you know what, let's do this, this is great. So when they reach a critical mass of 20, 25, I don't know what, I don't know what the exact number is, but let's just say it's 20, 25 people. They start using their credit cards and um, they say, when should we watch this? Oh, let's watch it at this theater next Thursday at 7 o'clock. So now they book this theater next Thursday at 7 o'clock. And this theater knows now that people are coming, so they start downloading the film, they download the poster, they print the poster, they put it out in the foyer, and then they pay the rights holder, sales agent, or the producer, if the producer didn't deal with them directly, 500 euros. Or whatever the number might be, it's in that range. And then people can watch it. And this, compared to the old model, where the producer was the, was the last person to get paid, we switched around, and because it's on demand, and because the cheap expenses of, of distributing through the internet and through the pipelines, we will actually get, be the first person to get paid. And it's an on-demand, so it's, it's good for films that might not, I mean, of course, the studio world, the Batmans and the Supermans and the Spider-Man films out there, they, of course, will, will still go to all the theaters, but for a smaller film, this is a great way to get out there, to get out to these small theaters and try to get place. There's different companies working on a model now, and B side in the States, and several European companies, trying to look into this, how we can connect all these theaters, because they're all digital cinemas now, so we don't need the prints anymore. Good. Um, uh, there's a little bit of rain Brazil. Um, another good example of what's going on right now in the world. If some of you have heard about this, comp this film called Paranormal Activity. It's opened huge in the States. Basically, it was a small, small film uh, made for $75,000. It was in Sundance, but picked up by Paramount, I believe it was. And um, uh, they didn't want to do anything about, about it, but the director wanted to say, let's try and go through social media, see if people want to ask for, to get it. And through social media campaign, this website called Eventful is actually a place where you go in, you put something up, and if you like some music band, you can say, I demand it to come to my city, or I want this film to come, or whatever. It's a way to, to see how many interest there is in certain cities. And Paramount said, okay, if you reach a million users or whatever, we'll show up, we'll set the film out. So the first weekend, it opened up 100 screens and, the, and became number two in the, on the US box office. And, and this weekend, which is the last weekend here, it's out on a thousand screens just by popular demand. But suddenly we go suddenly we go and ask the fans first if they want something, as opposed to just throwing it out there, throw a lot of marketing after it and hoping somebody will show up. And it's the new model of um, of, uh, of pu uh, pooling instead of pushing. All right, I want to show a different example um, of something that's happening right now. It's a different way of to understand the cinema and demand thing. Let me see if I can find my... Next thing here, Robbie Williams. Everybody familiar with him? Let's see, I need to make it smaller because it messed up my settings. <clears throat> there you go.
returning to Robbie Williams' concert. I want to point out tonight that he's, he's performing one concert and they're putting it out in select theaters around Europe, that one performance. And that's one of the key aspects of, of trying to learn from the music industry is to make something like an event. The problem is what we've been teaching the consumers for the last 10, 15, 20 years is that there's no immediate rush to go see a film. They can just, if they don't see the first weekend, they can see the second weekend. If not there, they'll wait. They'll come on pay TV, and then they'll come to DVD, and they just wait there, and the prices will go more and more down. Then they can wait, they'll come on free TV. There's no incentive for a normal consumer to rush in and watch that latest European film. But we, have, we haven't thought about making it an event. By doing what he's doing, by having this where we ask the people first, it, it's easier. We can reach the fans and we can get better out and we can spend our marketing money a lot better that way by making it on the band. It's just the, the usual model of shipping a hundred prints and just hoping for the best and everything will work out. Does that make sense? Are you all awake or are you dead asleep? Good. I mean, not good if you're asleep, but... Uh, <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> so, just to understand the old world, and again, this is one, two years ago, it's very old. The old world consisted of a trailer, a billboard, TV spots, and so forth. Put a lot of money up and hoping somebody will show up. The new world is a viral world, meaning that you create something on social media, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or whatever it is, and it spreads around. People start sharing it with one another if they're interested in one subject. And that's how it jumps, called viral. Of course, through Facebook, MySpace, YouTube, and Google Ads and stuff like that. The old marketing, as I said, is push. I said it wrong before, which I said before. Push. And it was about giving something like hook, a little bit of commercial, and then pull people in. There was this trying to, to, to sell that way. And it was also a world of I said so. Well, this is great. You've got to go watch it. People's bullshit meter is so good now that they don't trust anything anybody says anymore, except if it's some of their friends who are among them. It was also a world that was very celebrity endorsed. Somebody said something or somebody was endorsing something. That would help. It was a world of text, print, and email. Notice it says email. It's, email is, is, is soon to be especially when it comes to advertising going on. And it was all community-based by something being going on in London or something going on in Munich. Today it's a new world of pulling. <coughs> it's about sampling. It was interesting to see that the new, not new, but when Batman, the, the big film was released, was it last year, the great film, was a really good film. The first 20 minutes of the film, that bank scene, if anybody of you has seen it, the first 20 minutes of the film was actually put out on the internet by the studio, as of saying, look how great this is. This is 20 minutes for free, you can watch it right now, to build anticipation for the film. We're so, to think, we're so used to thinking 90 seconds or 60 seconds or two minutes. No, no, go out there, show it. Show as much as possible. Of course, not the whole film. Then nobody will show up. By proving that it's actually really good by showing how good it is. So we've got to come away from that. And that's what I mean by proving instead of saying, oh, it's great, go see it. No, no, prove it. Everyday spokesperson, if you go in and you check something out on eBay, on Amazon, or, or Facebook, or whatever it is, always people recommending, pointing out, giving stars. And people trust that much better than they trust advertising, as I said in that video I showed earlier. Everything is turning into video today. Video, video, video is going to be key when it comes to showing and proving. I mean, if I was a producer today and somebody liked my film, I would be standing outside the theater when people come out and get their media reaction and just interview all these people and post the same night and build up this awareness by, by people talking to the camera because people trust somebody who is normal as opposed to some... Um, great critic out there, and by the way, all the critics are going to be out of their job soon because the newspaper are closing, so that's bad as well. <clears throat> um, and it's about connections, it's about how many followers do you have on Twitter, it's about how many people do you have on Facebook, it's about sharing information through that, that connection instead of the community base, because it's all online now. <clears throat>